I'm very excited to welcome everyone for the second half of this great panel presentation. I keep calling it panel, excuse me, great presentation from Caitlin Burns. Uh, you're an entire panel. That's how, yeah, an entire panel's worth of programming in one woman. How crazy is that? Yeah, that you are a legion. So um, I'm going to get off the stage and let uh, Caitlin Burns continue telling us a little bit about McCarran Park and specifically about how to get noticed without paying for it. Thank you all for coming out. Hope to see you tomorrow uh, as Convergence continues on the 30th. Caitlin, thank you so much, and thank you to uh, all of you. Okay, lots of thanks. Bye-bye. Let's have one more round of applause for Matt Bullish for putting this incredible thing together. Okay, so... Some of you are new faces. Some of you weren't here for the first half of this uh, screening and presentation. So to let you know, we're doing annotated scenes from the Transmedia Experience Jurassic Park Slope. Nope, McCarran Park. Uh, the name is McCarran Park now. Um, but uh, this half we're gonna focus on distribution and we've sort of gotten through our production process in terms of how we've been annotating the scenes. And this is our story so far. Um, Alan and Ellie were convinced by Alan's little brother, right here, Hammy, uh, to come out to a party in Brooklyn. Uh, on the way, they met up with Hammy's roommate, Malcolm, in the glasses, and a friend from college who may or may not bankroll a party-promoting scheme of Hammy's. Um, Ellie had friends from LA arrive for the weekend, and they were swept into Hammy's plot to impress uh, Suit, the, the college friend, and a beautiful enigmatic producer that he has a crush on. Uh, after pre-gaming, uh, the group separated when their fourth roommate, Wayne, waylaid Hammy with a plot not at all suspicious or vague. Uh, the rest ventured to the party, but suddenly realized that no one knew where it was. Uh, they split apart again when a drunk hipster uh, inspired Ellie and the gamekeeper, who she had met online in an extended platform, uh, to escort the young lady home. Uh, and then uh, saying he is leaving to get beer, uh, Wayne stole the only flyer to the party. Finally, where we left off, uh, Ellen, Malcolm, Suit, Ariana, and Joe from LA uh, made their way north to McCarran Park, where they were confronted with a danger they had not anticipated. And bear with me because I'm my own tech. <laughs>
maybe it's just because, you know, it's, they called anybody born before 1985 old. <laughs> I mean, it's the first magazine to deem me old. I'm not even 28 yet. Well, I have this question for you, even though I can't mind it. She works for Kanye West. Anyways, she said that Texas Central was evil. Is this yours? Texas Central is yours. <laughs> they love that. Do what they do. So, you and my best friend are moving in together. I mean, you're a dork, but it's obvious you two live with each other. Oh, I guess we have to evolve too. So, the means of creating and distributing for creative work have never been more available to so many people. Um, for most of us, this means the difference between making something of our own or not sharing anything at all. Um, for those of us who have a story, what else do you have? That's where you can start. Um, as I said in the last panel, I place a lot of stock in writing down your crazy ideas and writing them down early and often and looking back on them. Um, for us, we started with that idea in the center and over the course of 18 months, it spread to all of these pieces that we were able to begin or implement or actually do in, in the real world. And that all came from the uh, collaborative efforts of our cast, our crew, but also the opportunity to have people go through our crazy ideas with us and figure out what they liked, what they wanted to do, and what made them laugh uproariously. Back in Brooklyn, uh, Ellie and the gamekeeper find Malcolm with a twisted ankle alone on the street. They take Malcolm to back to his place where they'd pre-gamed earlier, planning to reach out to the other group from there.
melted. Could you melt it out on the counter? Yeah. Well, melting is still kind of fun. It's not even that hot. It's because you should put some on there. Oh, you're right. Mm. It's a great size. I'm also not the right measuring tool for this. [laughs] Mm. I just don't even know what half of an inch is. I think you're gonna need this one, Chancey. Yep. No, it's okay. You're right. You're absolutely right. Josh was stupid. I can't even get an investor without a reasonable backing. I can't even get a job with my g f a. [laughs] [noise] Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start flipping bands. Learn how to design websites. Get an internship. Just can't help it. Chancey, Chancey. Mm? Chancey, Chancey. [laughs] This is a job. You've got a job. Get an answer. Hang up. Get a stuff that you can't do anything about. Can I just chill out? I think you're adorable, Susie. Mhm. You're not being a total tool. [laughs] Who cares? If you can't get a job, the economy is shit right now. [laughs] You are up to your eyeballs in debt from college. [laughs] [noise] And what matters now are the people that we love, and they're out there. Yeah. This community that you have around you that you have somehow convinced into coming to this possibly imaginary party they're what matters right now. Yeah. You know? [noise] Yeah. Why don't you two just get a room? Yeah. Let's do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah [laughs] [noise] Subtle beer. No, it did not magically grow from the mold on the left side of my cheek. Yeah. Mm. [noise] Junette's telling me that it's faux pas. [laughs] [noise] [laughs] Say it later. Peace. Out. [noise] [laughs] Okay, so we put something together. We produced it. And, um, yeah, we produced it. Um, and what did we have? [noise] We know we have a story. Nothing ruins a good party like a velociraptor attack. And when a group of urban hipsters get caught in a whirlwind of messy-go-lucky fury, it'll take more than PBR and vinyl to get them out of Brooklyn alive. [laughs] That's what our story has in it. [noise] But it's really about the characters inside and and what it is that they are discovering and that is really mirroring our own process, you know, being able to find collaborators. [noise] Being able to make something like an experience or an event or even a get-together that wasn't there before. For him, he, he's really seeking out the kind of relationship his older brother has. Um, all of these underpinnings, whether you're putting them out in an in a Sorkin-esque, uh, monologue or not, um, they're what your story is really about. And the rest of it, you can get away with a lot if you have that strong core story. And that's one of the things we set out to prove with this movie. [noise] Back in Brooklyn, Alan, Joe and Ariana attempt to make their way to Hammy's place. Uh, but they really hate walking and stop for snacks. Alan leaves the two safely by the bodega to search for Hammy's par- pal. [noise]
So once you have your story, once you know what it's about, how do you pick your platforms? Well, different platforms are different tools. They're not just film. They're not just games. What does games mean? Um, well, the reality is, if you look back at your story again, chances are you might see something that makes sense in terms of the platform you'd want to put your, pro your project on. Uh, know why you're using each tool and how. For us, that meant phones. We wanted to put people in a place, and geolocation so software was the place to do it. So we partnered with Mo Movable, Feast Mo Movable Feast Mobile Media, uh, and th the film itself, in, f in its fullest form, can be seen by a walking tour of Brooklyn that unlocks all of the scenes you aren't seeing here today. And then back to our origins. Those of us who were in the first panel saw that we got a lot of attention and a lot of success from using flyer campaigns. So we built some fictional dinosaur celebrities, tied them into our live events, put together some music, and publicized those in Brooklyn as well. Something that, something is wrong. He's not answering my call. He's not responding to my text messages. He should have come back from the vacation by now. Ariana's not DMing my DMs. No one's responding to my Facebook status. What am I supposed to vlog about this or something? I took it away. It's all this is. Back in the day, people are bringing each other their phones all the time. It's gonna get to the party. Mm. Damn it. Did it get to the limelight? Yeah, but at least know where it was. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just stroll down the road, you know. It's okay. They've only been gone for like. <sighs> There's still no data. I'm going with you. Okay. I could have sworn I had that flying machine by now. All right. I'm gonna keep looking. You go to the dog. Now, what should we drink? should really want to go. I do realize I won while you were gone and not actually playing. I'm sure I'm getting this far. I was just in the lab ready to play some. <laughs> Fifteen years later, you still don't even know how to power fly. I know how to power fly. Thank you very much. You're too obsessed with the boots. It's all about turning the camera from something that does look like a smooth perfect parabola. That's a good thing. Well, when this red shell eats your ass, you'll see power flying in it. You do realize that you get the good items because you're a mascot. It's, it's charity. It's affirmative action for white people. <laughs> What happens when you've made the thing? How do you get it out to an audience? Uh, all the audience building and production that you can do is great. Um, but you have to be able to speak, go beyond that as well. Uh, we used Storify to recapitulate the scenes that we had on our social media networks. 
uh, Twitter, Facebook, both in terms of the narrative that we presented on those networks, but also traditional advertising of telling people when things were. Um, we use Tumblr to do a few fictional, bl uh, fictional bl uh, characters' blogs, but also to highlight our presence. WordPress to put together our site. Uh, Instagram to put up images. Um, YouTube to put up trailers and the like, Vimeo. And of course, Movable Feast Mobile Media, who were an incredible partner and is the feature piece that we have out at the moment. Um, it was really interesting to see how the different narrative char character sets drew different audiences than those who were simply seeking out the experience and seeking it out in a, in a more consumer-like way. And people got more engaged with, say, actually testing Ellie to find out if she knew about paleobotany. I know a lot more about paleobotany now. Uh, Jackson has some really solid uh, music commentary that's still going on and put together quite a bit of interaction with folks. And this brings us back to Brooklyn. Uh, Ellie and game the gamekeeper made their way into the night, but they are being hunted. The gamekeeper bravely took on a single drunk and affectionate velociraptor. His fate is unknown. Um, his sacrifice allowed Ellie to escape to Bedford Avenue. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about how to tell narratives online, uh, Mudlark Theatre Company and the Royal Shakespeare uh, Company uh, put together a fantastic Romeo and Juliet on Facebook and Twitter. That was called Such Tweet Sorrow. And one of the real advantages of online narratives is that you can actually see who you reach. You can show your model for a very low cost distribution platform. Um, if you're looking to put out something that is more film related, there are some really exciting things going on from both the major content distributors like uh, BitTorrent that recently partnered with DJ Shadow to release a bundle that, um, for those of you who don't know, DJ Shadow is a musician who has been very vocally anti-piracy and very vocally anti-giving things away for free. 
So BitTorrent, with its reach to millions of P2P users around the world, found a way to monetize within the software so that the song that you download in this bundle is actually given to you for free, but DJ Shadow is paid from the marketing back end of their wider variety of sponsors that want to have some small thing included in this content. If you look at YouTube, there are a lot of very entertaining things done with multiple stories told in the same story world on their different channels. This is my music, and it has a narrative story arc that's told in an episode every Sunday, as well as different shows during the week that's given by different characters that not only add to their characterization and storylines, but feature musicians from around the world who actually exist. And all of these groups are actively pursuing content. They are looking for people that they can feature in things like film festivals. Uh, Vimeo did a very interesting one partnered with Emirates Airlines. Uh, the opportunities are out there and people are looking for good content, especially content built with a mindset towards this kind of multiple pr platform production. And of course, Movable, Fe Movable Feast Mobile Media, where you can, f in their catalog is where you can find Jurassic, Par uh, you can find McCarran Park, um, has a really solid interface for geolocated stories. Uh, this is a very cool thing. I came out of theater and live events, and I love the opportunity to take a, f a film, a story, some music, and really put it in a place to add to that story, and to be able to have the people who experience speak back to us in the same place. Sure, it's just two raptors, right? The third one's contained. Yes, yes, it's hammered. Also, we have to learn how to open the door and set. So, what would we have done if we had more money? This is a question that now that we're through, we can think about and we can brainstorm about and imagine in a full way. Um, the first and most important thing that I would have done if we had more money, we built this entire thing for under $3,500. Um, we would have paid the people who worked on it with us in something other than mutual promotion and fun and the occasional drink. Um, there are some really solid ways that the guilds are reaching out to make it easier for low budget productions and productions on multiple platforms to actually access their talent and finding ways to lower the barriers that m a lot of independent and emerging producers have to working within that system. There's also the very real reality that people are giving you their time and when you're coming up against this, a lot of that time is in lieu of them out making money on their own. Um, another thing, uh, we probably would have had better quality if we had half a billion dollars to make this. Uh, instead of paper mache, we might have used animation. Instead of uh, shooting in the dark, we might have actually been able to rent a light. Uh, instead of uh, you know really having to limit the number of live events we did because we didn't have the funds to make a deposit, um, we could have used that to really better showcase the musical acts who generously allowed us th to 
to use their, their work. Uh, we could have had more opportunities to actually interact with our audience in Brooklyn. And while we still hope to do some of these things in the future, uh, it would have been amazing to have done more during the production process. Um, finally, this took us over two years to get to the point we are today here presenting it to you. Um, if we had had some money, we would have been able to work in a way where we could in, we could engage people to work in a time frame that was more reasonable. Uh, the way that we operated was we asked people to give us their evenings, and we tried to make sure that those evenings were not you know in in a space of a two week shoot period, but we spaced them out according to other people's schedules and really made a very strong effort to make it as easy as possible and, and as flexible as possible to the needs of our unpaid collaborators uh, as it could possibly be. So, will they survive? Um, one of the things that's hardest about 
you know, the, the period when you're almost done with a project, where you've, you've got most of it in the can and you're editing and you're distributing, is uh, it's much easier to remember why you wanted to do it when you were actually doing it with the cr creative community around you. Um, for us, when we got into this period, we really looked back at what we had written down, all the crazy ideas that brought us back to that space. Um, it helped us remember why it existed in the first place as a curriculum that will be in a book in the near future uh, that will show people how to make something better than this uh, with the techniques and with some of these platforms even um, and why it matters to us that this is out in the world. The moral of the story is the best parties in Williamsburg don't happen in Williamsburg. So why did we do this to you today? Uh, me and my collaborator who was called out of town suddenly. Um, we did this for fun. It was a blast to make this. It was a real incredible thrill to work with the collaborators we did and build something that was sprawling and took a lot of time but everyone really committed to. Um, and we did this specifically to show you that Everyone in this audience can do it better than we did. Uh, just looking at this, you can see that we put the bar low. You can do a higher quality piece in the same, with the same techniques using similar distribution platforms, and Lord knows I would have killed for some of the ones that exist now that didn't a year ago. Um, and with that in mind, uh, if you do it better than us, let us know. You can reach us at Caitlin Burns uh, underscore Words of Steel and Jurassic Park slow.
Thank you all. Um, as an additional note, uh, the Producers Guild of America is celebrating the New York Film Festival Convergence at a mixer at 6 p.m. today across the street in the Hauser Patron Salon. 
And with your ticket or pass, you'll be able to attend as well. There will be uh, beer and wine available, and you'll be able to learn about the New Media Council, the Producers Guild of America in general, and uh, maybe even meet someone cool. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'm here for questions and answers, and if you want to flee, uh, I understand. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.